breakfast puppies? This podcast contains adult language and content and is meant for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Glitter Boys. Radical! Welcome back to another episode of The Glitter Boys. I am NPC. I'm just Jacob. And we are joined... Uh, by very, 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 very special guests, uh, Sean Owen Robertson and Kevin Sambita. And if you're listening to this podcast and you don't recognize those names, I recommend going back and listening to all the hundreds of uh, episodes that have come before now, and maybe you'll know a little bit more and be introduced to wonderful games that they are creating for us to play. Together, we're Palladium Books, yeah. <laughs> And as a side note uh, for our longtime listeners, Matthew is not able to join us today, which he is probably at work crying in a corner right now because he was so heartbroken. He, yeah. You know, his job would not give him the time. And, uh, you know, as one of the founders of this podcast, an amazing fan of Palladium and this particular game in particular mm-hmm. that we're talking about today, uh, just wanted to let you know send him some love <laughs> we, we got his questions though yep good well just so you guys know whenever you want us just reach out we're happy to come back anytime so yep. what's your weekly availability, your availability. <laughs> <laughs> well maybe i spoke a little too hastily <laughs> weekly but i mean uh seriously we're happy you know, we're, we're both uh blabber mouths we love what we do and uh we're happy to talk about games and gaming and you know, turtles and riffs and whatever else. Come in whenever <laughs> you want to. <laughs> I keep saying that one day we're going to do a very, very, very special episode, and we might do it for episode 200, and that is to have Kevin on to talk about Valley of the Pharaohs. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the one that I never hear anybody ever mention, and I'm like, I've got a copy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, okay, Valley of the Pharaohs, however, is not what we are here to talk about today. If anybody has been listening to our episodes in sequence, our very last episode talked about our uh, wonderful, wonderful joy at the recent announcement of... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness. The Redux Edition. Yes! Yes. Oh, oh man. Oh. (laughs) Okay. How did this come to happen? Well, I mean, it's something we've wanted to do for a long, long time. I mean, TMNT was always one of our most popular role-playing games. People love it. It's like the most requested product, and people talk to us about, gee, could you bring back X or Y or Z? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangers is always at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. Um, And, uh, you know, it was just a matter of, of, of timing and... Um, I think a little bit of luck and uh, Sean being on board where he can help me do a lot of stuff we couldn't do without him. So uh, I reached out to Paramount and said, hi, this is who I am, in case they didn't know, which I was pleased and surprised that they didn't know. Uh, (laughs) I'm I'm stunned, given what the executive turnover is in hollywood these days the fact that anybody remembered that there was ever a license is kind of stunning (laughs) yeah well it's it's a it's an odd thing um fortunately one of the the people that we've been talking with he's a huge fan he he was telling us oh i've got my books back here on the (laughs) shelf right you know oh Um, but uh, it was it was one of those things that 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 kevin had been having conversations um for years um actually it was if viacom had reached out to you in 2019 uh nickelodeon in 2015 2015 okay yeah and so um there was but we didn't realize there had been a changing of the guard with the uh, viacom paramount merger thing um and so but 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 i was very excited when I joined Palladium Books. The, one of the first things I said to Kevin, like the next day, would, <laughs> I was like, I, "Hey, what about what about turtles?" <laughs> and I'm like, "What about it? Let's do it!" <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, we 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 decided to give it a fresh shot as soon as we uh, thought the timing was right, and it it's all gone. It's been a lot of work, but it's gone well, and so um, it only took us nine months to get a deal. 
Wow. That is, well, so as someone who's peripherally been involved in a bunch of Kickstarters over the years, uh, nine months is a good ramp up time. It also doesn't surprise me because like one of the strengths you as a publisher has always had was removing unnecessary middlemen whenever possible from your production, whether it's the fact that you maintain your own warehousing and you do your own packing and that sort of thing. You know, it's, it's both surprising that you pulled it off that fast and expected, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Well, I think everyone was surprised except for me. I was a bit ambitious because this was my first, uh, soiree into into uh a big license. hollywood licensing yeah. yeah um so i've been a part of a lot of different things but that was this has kind of been the final you know big l- level of tutelage with kevin saying okay sean we go in here you're gonna do this and then we're gonna talk about this and don't say this and <laughs> but it's been really great to to kevin's old hat at it and it really did help they knew who we were and other people that have been really excited are include Kevin Eastman yeah. and Peter Laird and a bunch of the other artists like Freddie Williams um, of Riff's art fame and uh, Sophie yeah. Campbell, who's she's writing the um, current IDW uh, TMNT comics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's been really great to connect with a bunch of people that we didn't realize were some of them. Most of them were such mega fans as yeah. well. So that's been really. Popular. And I think that helped us. You know, I think you know. Yeah, if, I don't know if, if it would be possible. Certainly, if if, if Paramount exec reached out to Kevin Eastman, you know, they would have got very positive feedback, you know, and the same thing with, with most of those people. So I think it helped that we had, you know, a good relationship with, you know, the guys and uh, that our work is so appreciated. I mean, it just, it always astonishes me. It makes me feel (laughs) amazing. So, you know, I'm glad people love our stuff so much and know our stuff. Yeah. One thing that we do in the Gooder Boys is uh, one of the mini series is that we have ongoing is kind of roughly in order of publication going back through different properties and going through the series of the books that were released and one of those properties is the rifter and one of the more recent rifters that we finally got to was rifter number nine Mm. and the the opening to rifter number nine was really sad (laughs) (laughs) i i I remember reading it back then and uh, i reread it before this just to kind of like refresh my memory and get a little bit more embedded into the cycle of how this license has gone. And uh, my question on that is, how do you feel regarding that sadness then versus this resurgence of the license coming back into being? Oh, it's it's fantastic. Um, you know, when we let the license go, uh, it, it was sad. It, we had toyed with doing a relaunch and just the audience wasn't there. It, you know, you're, you're talking you know, early or mid 1990s. And basically the cartoon, the the toys, the the movies, it all kind of kidified the turtle. So it went from like this cool alternative black and white comic book to basically Mickey Mouse. Mm-hmm. And, you know, our, our core audience was, you know, 10 to 35. And most of those people, especially college and high school kids, didn't want to play Mickey Mouse, the role playing game. <laughs> our sales just had plummeted and, you know, we just didn't feel like we could do the property justice. You know, in retrospect, I I wish we had kind of hung on to it and continued to produce it even with low numbers, but, you know, we decided to let it go. We we had a really good run. We had it for 10 or 15 years. You know, it's funny. I I still stayed in touch with Mirage Studios and would call them for advice. I still used a bunch of their artists, uh, Jim Lawson and Eric Talbert and, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we remained friendly, but it just seemed like the right thing to do. And so once it went, you know, to Nickelodeon and other Hollywood places, I'm like, gosh, I don't know if we can ever get this back. Yeah. Um, and so it's a thrill. And it, I tell you, it's been freaking amazing, uh, reconnecting with Kevin Eastman and That's... meeting new people like, uh, Sophie Campbell and a bunch of other artists. It's, it's been awesome. So it's, it's been really and to see all their excitement and how much they they love the idea, and how much I mean, you know, the, the first email we sent out to Kevin Eastman, he's like, "Yeah, by the way, I want to do a new painted cover," and we're like, 
They're just <laughs> sir, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> right. We know he's a he's a busy man. I mean, he, he's the work he's doing right now. Last Ronin, a lot of the stuff he's working on, it's so popular, yeah. mm-hmm. and he is in ever high demand. And he's just, I, I we, I, you know, we had a really great video call with him and i uh really enjoyed meeting him i'm so for anyone who doesn't know teenage mutant ninja turtles and other strangeness th- that was my original that's the first rpg i ever owned mm. and so uh, I, I i had played some dnd and d6 star wars western star wars with friends but um that that really cinched it for me and, and turned me into a lifelong palladium fan i was a big ninja turtles fan really really enjoyed the the graphic novels and so here it's crazy. It's coming all the way back around again, but it's super exciting to uh, be able to t- ch- to chat with these guys and and realize they're you know Kevin Eastman is just a solid person. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. just a yeah. really positive person. Um, you can tell he works hard. You can tell yeah. he's talented, but uh, he, he he doesn't have a big ego or anything. And it was fun to hear him and Kevin. They're obviously old friends um that had, that were reconnecting after years and it was really fun to hear them chatting together and telling stories and then just that he's so excited to be a part of this and promising he's like oh i'm gonna go dredge through a bunch of my old stuff i think i've got more oh. more, more behind the scenes stuff no one's ever seen before we'll, we'll get it to you i was like kevin can you please he's like, I was like you don't have to go scan that in yourself if you want to mail this stuff to us we'll treat it like the treasures they are we'll scan it in for you we'll send it back you know but i just i the thought of him going and and scan slowly laboriously going through and scanning things just really oh. killed me. Just <laughs> <laughs> a nice guy. He's a really great oh, yeah. guy. And he was so excited about um one of the big things we're doing with the new books is we're um doing full color. Yeah. So Ooh. he said it's some of the best color work he's ever seen. So we yeah. were um we were really excited that he he enjoyed the color work that's ongoing. Yeah. And going back to this whole legacy issue, like the time you all had it to its long, long run within the greater culture. I'm actually going to steal one of NPC's questions. <laughs> uh, Kevin, you made it on to an episode of the toys that made us. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> How did that happen? Oh, well, I mean, they were, they were making their episode and, and it's funny because uh, I haven't actually seen it. Uh, I've heard about it. I understand that I'm on it for like a whole whopping 20 or 30 seconds. And the irony to that is they filmed me for like two hours and said, this is one of the best interviews we've ever done. <laughs> and, and the reason, yeah. <laughs> Makes me wonder if there's like a technical difficulty or no, sound. No. Or <laughs> the focus was, you know, it's, no, the reason I was on there was because I'm the guy who introduced Kevin and Pete to Mark Friedman, who went on to, you know, turn them into the giant franchise that that they are. And, and that was kind of crazy because you know, I, I get pretty tight with Kevin Pete pretty quick. And then I was talking to Mark Friedman about a different license, and uh, he wanted to see examples of other things we had done. Well, I had only ever done Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or I'd only ever done... Uh, 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 yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Justice Machine, two comic book properties. I was a comic book guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I sent him the two books along with a couple other things. And he's like, every conversation we would have, it'd be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. We'll talk about business. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Does that make you smile? <laughs> make you laugh every time I hear Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Do you think those would make a good toy line? You think little kids would like it? I'm like, well, you know, my my six and nine year old loves it. Like, you know, love them and love the comics, and I think they'd do great. And blah blah blah. We, and we'd end up talking more about turtles and the possibilities that turtles. And he'd be like, you know, I'm good <laughs> friends with this guy who's starting a new toy company. You know, Playmate Toys. Oh. I'm like, oh yeah, the guys who are doing Star Trek toys. He's like, yeah. They're looking for a hot new line. Mm. I just think this is it. I mean, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It was hilarious. So finally, I said, yeah, it got to the point where I was actually feeling a little awkward. You know, this is a top professional guy. And I'm like, you know, Mark, I, I don't own the IP. You know, I <laughs> you should talk to Kevin Pete. They're good guys. Mm-hmm. And he's like, pass along my information. Tell them what, what I have in mind. And, and I'm like, okay. So I call, I think it was Peter I was speaking to, 
And I tell him what's going on, and Pete's like, I don't know. I think we'll pass. It sounds too good to be true. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. wait. It can't hurt to talk to this guy. You guys hold all the cards. Yep. Listen to what he has to say. If it sounds like, you know, baloney, you know, blow him off. But, you know, give the guy a call, see what he has to offer. And the rest is history, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. And that was the cool thing talking with Kevin Eastman was hearing his side of that same story when Mark Friedman showed up and they were painting their office. And, mm. and he's like, is this, hey, is Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird here? Yeah. I think they were working out garage is probably peter's garage yeah yeah they were and, painting up things and working on it yeah and, i guess mark is, isn't this like three-piece suit you know the six thousand dollar suit he's a big time licensing agent right and he like peeks around and there's these two guys in t-shirts and shorts and they're doing their thing and he's like kevin eastman peter lair <laughs> <laughs> So the episode is wonderful. I rewatched it last night. It's funny because that whole, I'm a Gen Xer, and now I am at the age where my childhood is being remarketed to me again. And, right. and that, of course, I consumed that entire series <laughs> because they're all, they were all representative of the toys from my youth. But the Ninja right. Turtles one, he, um, the guy's name, you were just talking about him. Yeah. Mark Friedman. Mark. Yeah, right. Mark was on there, and he was talking about how he had just rented that suit to impress them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, I'll have to go watch that episode. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's really good. <laughs> it's it's one of the funnier ones. I will say that. It's, it's less of the technical and deep thought yeah. emphasis on pop culture and more of the like you were talking about the weird coincidences and networking that made this all come together mm -hmm. and turn into this cultural element that has been going on for God, we're coming on 30 plus years. Yeah. yeah it's about to be the 40th anniversary of the turtles next yeah, year. Next yep. year. Oh man. And what was it? Last year was 40th anniversary of Palladium fantasy but this yep. year, last year. No, this year. Yeah. 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 This year. Yeah. yeah this all... year. 1983. It came yeah. out. Yep. Yep. Nice. Yeah. So it's hard to believe. I mean, I look in the mirror and I see the white hair and I go, yeah, I guess I'm an old guy, but it doesn't feel like it. You it know, doesn't, it just time yeah. by when you're I, doing stuff that you love. I, I feel you, Kevin, my beard and your hair are uh, <laughs> having a conversation about days long gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So stepping further back in time again, the minis that are happening on this Kickstarter. Ooh. The are you going to be using the same molds as the originals? No. no. Oh, okay. I kind of figured that you know molds have both a lifespan and you can only run them for so long. Yeah. Yep. yep. However, that does. Um, we already kind of got the answer through to this from other channels, but I want to express my deep abiding sadness. I understand the plushy slash stuffed toy is held <laughs> by someone else, and. I would give my eye teeth for a terror bear set in plushies. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, we, 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 uh, we explored all the options. <laughs> I'm sure you did. I, I, I'm sure you did. But it was like when the Kickstarter announced and I was like, ooh, what, what sort of just over the yeah. top stretch goals could they put on and the first thing that came to my mind was terror bear plushies mm -hmm. <laughs> too bad uh, ours, ours yeah, too, and kevin, alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and kevin said and i was like that's that's genius <laughs> <laughs> we have to ask <laughs> can't hurt um, to ask. no unfortunately we, we we didn't uh that wasn't uh an option at this yeah. point but um we are really excited to be offering uh two sets of uh miniatures a hero set and a villain set. Um, the, the Heroes has 10 uh, figures or max planned. We're, we're, we're probably going to start. Um, some of them are, are going to be um, Kickstarter stretch goals. Yeah. Um, including Fugitoid is the one that we are willing to talk about right now. Mm -hmm. And then the villain set is similarly sized. Uh, there might be an extra character in there because it has the terror bears and they're real small. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, but we, we're, we're, we, we, we just got the uh, green light on the miniatures very recently so this yeah. is one of those things that we jumped on it as fast as as we could um we already had some really great sculptors uh lined up yeah. that work on video games but also have done um sculpting for um 
Games for companies Workshop. like Games Workshop, yes, Fantasy Flight yeah. Games, um, and uh, I believe um, War Machine and some other, and, as well as other uh, like tabletop games and, and and different things like that. So there's some some really great people working on it, um, and they're 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 depicting the turtles and the other characters like the Terror Bears, uh, uh, Shredder, as they appear in our role playing games. So mm. it's, it's kind of cool. They're not some other IP. It's our our role playing games char- version of the characters. Speaking of the Kickstarter rewards, this mm-hmm. is probably the first time that I in my life of using Kickstarter. I'm just going to go to the page, scroll all the way bottom, find the one at the bottom and click this one. I want this one. <laughs> if I do that, can you give me a hint of what I might expect? <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, are you talking about a monetary account, or do you want do you want just a count of what you'll be getting? What cool stuff is like going into those high tiers? I cleared two thousand dollars off a credit card. I'm just <laughs> putting it out there. <laughs> well, we have um, so there's the, the, the two mini sets, um, and then we have we're working with Fanroll to do five custom dice sets and that's gonna the what's planned is a custom dice set with the colors of the each turtle's bandana Ooh. for Ooh. all four of the turtles and then an aluminum plated set of dice for shredder oh. Oh. and they come in a, in a nice collector's box with with um a bag with the uh, print dice of bag. the ca- dice bag with the character print um there's also a dice tray a dice tower and it looks like we're going to have a themed matte scroll case that that i i have crazy ideas sometimes and it looks like the tcri canister if they can make it happen yeah oh Uh, tcri mutagen canister Uh Uh uh-huh (laughs) uh-huh so uh um, (laughs) so for all the dice goblins in our uh fan base uh yeah yeah just you might want to you know clear pick up some extra shifts (laughs) there's good stuff coming yeah 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 (laughs) yeah um, and then we are doing um, a poker deck um, mm-hmm. just because I enjoy making those um, and we can and they are letting. Us. And then uh, let's see what game else? Game Master Screen. Game Master Screen. Yep. So the Game Master Screen is going to be back. It's going to be all completely new, yeah. redesigned. Yeah. But we are using um, the original art by Kevin Eastman um, that he did for that, uh, which everyone seems to just love like I do. I'm always surprised when everyone loves things the same way that I do. And then uh, let's see, we've got. Um, well, there's the two hard. There's the two hardcover books. So, and, yep. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the, they they collect. So we're we're collecting these six original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles books into two yep. hardcovers that are roughly 256 pages. Um, we're adding a lot of tribute material and pinup art pages by a lot of TMNT luminaries, oh. as well as written remembrances. Oh. So and um, behind the scenes and behind the scenes material. So if we need to go a little bit over, like add an extra 32 pages called a signature to like one of the books, or we might need to do that, but um, we'll, that's not a big deal. And then um, we are collecting it into the, so the first book, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness, technically it's the TMNT and Other Strangeness collection. It's coming with uh, <laughs> the TMNT role-playing game, uh, Turtles Go Hollywood and Trucking Turtles. Good, and good then the, um, the second book, which we're calling Tran- uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Transdimensional Adventures, is um, Transdimensional Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, TMNT Guide to the Universe, and uh, TMNT Adventures. So there's going to be a lot of great material in those books, um, and it's all going to be full color. Um, I am doing it's 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 we're calling it the Redux edition. Mm-hmm. So um, I it, it's we want to stay true to the original 1985 game, but at the same time, uh, this is a chance to do you know a lot of things that we um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with um, if you got in on the Titan Robotics campaign with the the Cyborgs collection, mm-hmm. but we remastered as part of that. Um, we remastered those books. So again, with these with these books, we're we're pulling out books used to be made by typewriters and and paste on boards that were sent to you know the printer. And so we're uh, we've got those scans where you, we use that to get them digitized. Um, and I am relaying out the books from the ground up, um, doing you know spell check editing paths as well as clarifications oh. on rules. So, Ooh. I mean, it's not just a reprint of the text. Yeah, right. It is a new edition. Now, some, now, one of the things I try to be really careful when I say it's a new edition is 
you know, this isn't like we're not rebooting the whole Palladium system, right? Um, I just want to make sure people understand this is the classic game. And the original rules. And the original rules, but uh, we are updating some of the terms, yeah. some of the terminology, adding some things that we think are going to be great quality of life issues that people are looking for yeah. um, to make sure that it's easy to pull out and play again. Um, because yeah. one of the things we love about Turtles is that it's dead simple. It's yeah. it's combat and skill checks and adventure, right? So um, there's no s major psychic powers or tons of magic, and, right? Um, and the color alone makes will make the books feel oh. like they're brand new. I mean, you know, you, you you can imagine it, you think it, and then we'll show select insiders you know, who are working with us and other artists a bunch of the color illustrations, they and they're nuts. like, oh, my God. So, yeah, we're really excited so to hopefully be able to show off soon, yeah. just trying to make sure we don't completely overwhelm Paramount with the approvals process. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we're, we're, and then, so with those two books, also, we're also going to do collector's editions that are foil-stamped hardcovers. Yeah, there'll be a color alternative cover. So, so the mask market covers are both by Freddie Williams. They're both homage covers. They're both magnificent. That's the the art that you see in the in in the Kickstarter landing yep. page and other other yep. material out there like in our press release. Kevin Eastman's doing a variant cover for the RPG and, so the and those book. two source, source books. Sophie Campbell's doing an alternative color cover for Transdimensional oh. PMT. Yep. It's awesome. They're both awesome. They both look beautiful. And um, then Kev and Pete are doing line art for the foil. The foil, and you know, oh. should look something like this. Use this as an example because we're calling oh. it our mutagen green edition. Edition. Yeah. Oh my god! So, that, and that's that's we're really excited because uh, that was one of the things that um, just for for Peter to want to be a part of that. We we're yeah. super stoked about. Oh, um, yeah. And so um, we're uh, also. We're coming out with uh, two, I guess you'd call them parallel books. So it's, I don't know if you're familiar, if you're familiar with comics, you may have heard of the black, white, and red edition of certain comics. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So we're going to have a black, white, and red edition of both books. Yeah. Where the cover is black, white, and red off of Freddy's art. Yeah. And then the interior will have splashes of red for the four color, you know, the four red masks. Uh, splats of blood or you know shredder uniform depending Sound on effects yeah. yeah different effects like that depending on what uh the art on that page is but it's it's going to be just with a dash of red in there but that's for for everyone who's like i love the original black and white art or i want i love the 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 red bandanas well that was kind of our compromise yeah. is to come out with a black white and red edition as well i think that's it i think uh, i don't know if you mentioned there'll be a couple of print sets yeah, a couple print sets, poster. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's everything or most everything. Nice. Segwaying from something you mentioned a minute ago about Titan Robotics, you probably know this question is coming, but it's the biggest one that people in our communities have been asking. Any chances of one of those stretch goals suddenly appearing that's like, here's the conversion for Savage World? No, that's mm. uh, not part of the license deal. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yep. So one of the things... In my gaming history, TMNT has turned up in just about every Palladium game, including Fantasy, I have ever participated in eventually. Obviously, Heroes Unlimited, no problem. Ninjas and Super Spies, of course. But like, it went to the point where I... In the 90s, late 90s, I watched a documentary on the Australian experience during the Vietnam War. And being this old recon head, I did, I took Mutants Down Under, TMNT, and the recon book and ran Aussie <laughs> volunteers in the NAM. And what is your reaction to the fact that people may have one niche within the Palladium Megaverse that, that calls to them the most, but it seems like everybody is open to having some mutant animal come bebopping into the scene. <laughs> well, I mean, we all know animals. We all like animals. We all find them interesting and even amazing. And, you know, we, probably 90% of your viewership is owns a dog or a cat or several or a hamster or whatever. <laughs> And uh, I think there's just something romantic about animals and humanoid animals. And, 
you know, why is Chewie so popular in Star yeah, Wars? Exactly. You know, it's there's just that, you know, natural thing. And I think part of that's because of our of our relationship to canines and felines. Yeah, absolutely. This time I'm gonna steal one of Jacob's questions. Did <laughs> the canine mutants in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles role playing game contribute to your development of my favorite characters in all of the entire megaverse the dog boys uh actually not not really that was just sort of uh i i I, i'm a dog person and uh you know i just thought dogs made total sense if you're going to genetically manipulate uh animals they're they're the perfect animal to be your human ally companion definitely works yep and what's what's not fun about playing the goodest boy (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. So one question I had with a lot of Kickstarters, they'll do promotional activities uh, to just get the word out there, which I mean, you've already started a wildfire at this point to a certain extent. So uh, finding people who aren't already have October 31st bookmarked on their calendar is getting harder and harder in my circles. Is there any chance that there's going to be some interviews coming out with like any of the artists on this in support of the Kickstarter promotion? Um, we'd actually been talking about doing some interviews with artists. You know, one of the things that is tough, and uh, this is no knock on on Paramount, was we really wanted to launch the Kickstarter now. Um, <laughs> if it had been, a, it would have been a while back, but we really wanted to do that this year, and so that means that we did run out of some runway. Um, during you know necessary contract negotiations, of course, um, to make sure that we everyone was happy with with the contract we got. So, and we're very happy with where we we got as well. But uh, that is one of the the things that's been tough is it's meant that we have a lot less runway to to uh, get a lot of those things lined up. So we'd love to do it, and we have talked about doing it. But I don't know if that'll happen until maybe after the Kickstarter launches. Yeah. We are already talking to some artists about that, but right now it's just all hands on deck, just. Yeah. making sure that we're coordinating the sudden flurry of 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 work on on dice and miniatures and you know getting art I- I approved and in and all that kind of stuff totally totally makes sense i just i've talked to a lot of people including a, the, a fair amount of artist friends who really really love uh the entire teenage mutant ninja turtles uh history of its art and presentation and stuff And uh, there is definitely an appetite that are out there to hear from the artists uh, on this project. So um, just thank you for letting us know. I mean, that's, that's great. We try and listen and you know um, it's tough when you're real busy. (laughs) Oh yeah. No, (laughs) absolutely. uh, We'll definitely be, uh, we'll keep that in mind and see what we can do. We, like I said, we were already talking about it um, and we'll see what we can do, especially once the Kickstarter is launched. And so what if, what one thing, should people know about this Kickstarter that you think hasn't really gotten out there yet? That's a tough question. Um, I, uh, I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of little details. Uh, I can't wait until people can see what, what a lot of the art looks like. Cause again, you can talk about it and say it's color. And you, you know, like I said, you, you think you can picture what that means. And then, I mean, even us, even Sean and I, yeah. you know, and, uh, when when the first couple pieces came in, Sean like comes into my room like a tornado. Dev, you gotta come in, come, come here, you gotta see this. <laughs> and, and, and all of it were just sitting there going, <sighs> Yeah. You know, it was like something out of two thousand and one in space author to see. And yeah. there's there's the obelisk. We're just like <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it looks so good. Yeah, we're working with um the well the main artist that's doing a lot of the color work, uh, the interior color work and the covers on the for the two Freddie Williams homage um, pieces is uh, Michael Majestic, who's done a lot of stuff for Palladium before. But he, I didn't realize he had spent a, a good amount, at least a year or two, doing comic art uh, coloring work. And he's really good at it. And then part of it was figuring out how to colorize this art, which was, you know, black and white and not intended for color. Um, well, it, it, part of it was a duo shade makes it tricky. Right. Well, that was the other thing was a duo shade. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because they couldn't back in the day, they couldn't print grayscale. So that's been a big, a big challenge. But yeah, when we, we worked through a lot of the details, but then still, when we saw it, we we're um, I was just like, holy shnikes. So I mean, this is art that we know intimately, especially. Well, I mean, Sean played it for years. 
you know, I helped create the damn thing. And it's like, you know, you think you know it, and then you see, you yeah, know, yeah. The turtles or well, Dr. With, Feral, and it's like, well, and when the layout too, the new the new refresh layout is uh, is hard to communicate. It just looks yeah. real solid. And I, you know, not trying to toot my own horn, but I mean, I am proud of it. <laughs> the other thing I would say is just, yeah, this isn't just uh, some sloppy reprint. Like I said, remastering this from, I'm remastering this personally from the ground up. I'm doing the editing pass. You know, Kevin and I have talked about ways we're approaching certain things to make sure that it's as clear as possible for modern readers and, and gamers. So so that's that's one of the things that I think is very exciting about it as well. Uh, in addition, we're going to be having, uh, you know, rear uh, back index for the books. Just a lot of a lot of those little modern things that I think people will really appreciate. Um, one of the things that I will mention that we've we've been asked about: uh, there will not be PDF versions of these books. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so that everyone understands that. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where I don't know if it, it, it really a PDF could do it justice, in my opinion. It, the end art is going to be so beautiful once it's printed. So I do know a whole bunch of people went. Uh, trying to pull all of the originals. <laughs> I don't know why this happens with Kickstarters. I, I, I just do not understand, but like someone announces they're doing a Kickstarter to bring an updated version of something. And suddenly people are like picking up PDFs of the original version and hitting the secondary market. I told you the story about how, when I tried to pick up a copy because mine is somewhere in some box in a storage unit I was literally trying to buy it and watching the price ratchet up. So, you know, I <laughs> for, is I just know that people are out there looking for it at the moment. Okay, I got another question about the art. Um, and this one is, again, stepping back to Rifter number nine. That's Simon Bisley cover. Any chance we'll see that actually grace a book at some point in the future of, you know, maybe expanded or second edition rules? <laughs> <laughs> You never know. Oh. <laughs> oh man! Someone warned me that Kevin could get mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. So, how much of that? Okay. Tangent time. How much of the second edition Ninja Turtles draft? At that time, how much of that made it into after the bomb second edition rules wise? Was it just like a, a translation? Are you talking about the new new ish that Eric did in uh, 2001? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one with that really awesome horse with the machine gun on the cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stallion <laughs> Blitzkin. <laughs> I mean, I think really just the, the core rules. Eric yeah, yeah. really went to town with it and added a bunch of stuff like Chimera. So you could have like multiple powers and and stuff, you know, from two, three different animals, and you know, it's the, you know the, the the core basis is there, you know, the animal creation and stuff. But you know, he went and tweaked and added animal powers and you know psychic abilities and other details, so, some a bunch of new animals in, in the book. You know, it's true to the origin, but it's you know quite different. So, of all of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and other strangeness, and we'll we'll pull in the original first edition after the bomb stuff because I, I will go to my grave saying it's a continuity of the universe. <laughs> what is your favorite supplement, not core book, but supplement for the whole line? Well, it's easy for me. It's it's transdimensional TMNT. It's such a good book. It's such a good book. <laughs> Dinosaurs, yeah, I mean, time traveling van. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. For, personally, when I was a kid, um, back when before the internet's, I, I I didn't I've never owned transdimensional TMNT. It it just I never saw it on a store shelf. Um, I don't know if I just had bad timing or what. But uh, for me, uh, Turtles Go Hollywood's my favorite, mm. just because I remember playing that. And reading those adventures. And it was, for me, it was really formative as a game master. So <laughs> it kind of taught me, oh, this is how you're supposed to do an adventure. This is, you kind of set up this and that, uh, you know, some skill checks, a chase, some fights, right? Yeah. Um, intrigue <laughs> reveals. So, yeah. And, you know, I just want to point out, you know, this oh. the After the Bomb RPG 
is like 224 pages. So obviously there's a lot of new stuff. Yeah. And then yeah. just historically the best selling Team and T and other strangeness source book was Team and T Adventures. Yep. That's so good. And yeah, that was the first so book for us when, when it came in. You know, we knew Turtles was hot. We printed 20,000 copies and we shipped out 14,000 day one. Wow. That that was our reaction. It was like, wow. <laughs> you know, it, that's one of the things in all of the books. There are a lot of companies out there that do supplements and they'll throw either a supplement out that's all scenarios or is a setting and then they tack on some scenarios. I can't honestly think of one truly weak scenario inside the TMNT line. And mm -hmm. all of them have great plays on the themes of TMNT, you know, uh, alienation, outsiders, uh, the, the heroes that um, aren't necessarily totally accepted. You're not Superman. You're having to live in an alleyway, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. That solid writing has one of the things that has held up so well. And even younger folk, because I also am a Gen Xer, even younger folk, millennials, and now some Generation Z folks that I've introduced TMNT to have found the stories to be super, super good, the characterization to be super, super deep. Like, again, I'm going to go back to the terror bears. The, the characterization of each of the terror bears, how you manage to encapsulate some really complex personalities in like a page and a half for four characters is still some of the best, tightest characterization I've seen in an RPG scenario. Well, er Eric Woodjick, you know, I mean, yeah. he, he was fantastic and he and I were hot as hell when that book was being created and it stands up and, and, and you know, a lot of it too. I always tell people like when they ask me, you know, is it worth getting a license? And I say, there, there's only three reasons to get a license. And any one reason is is sufficient. That is either you're going to make a pile of money, <laughs> it's going to open up doors for you, or and or you love the material. And for us, we love the material. So it was easy to translate that into a different media, at least for medium for us. Um, you know, part of it is Eric wasn't originally supposed to write the book. And so I we had talked about it. For, oh yeah, no, it someone else was was writing it. And uh Eric was really into the turtles. I was really into the turtles, and we talked about it constantly for like four months while we were waiting for this manuscript to come in. And then when the manuscript came in, it just really fell flat. And I'm like, oh my god, Eric, what am I gonna do? I just spent, you know, thousands of dollars in Dragon Magazine ads for the last, you know, four months, and everyone's expecting it now. And He's like, yeah, Kev, let me just, uh, let me write the character creation part. And it was like, you know, and he came up, you know, he, and we had talked about all the different elements that we really need, it really should be and what it really needed to really sing. And, uh, you know, he, he, he had so much figured out in his head already. And we had talked about it so extensively that, uh, you know, he banged the damn thing out in four and a half weeks. Now, that's like obsessively he was working on just that book probably 12 or 15 hours a day, but, you know, and, and it's a freaking masterpiece. It's, it just holds up. It mm -hmm. was so good. And like you said, he just, he nailed it on so many levels. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's, you know, that's one of the things that as a fan before I got into, well, I guess the industry, you know, or <laughs> whatever, <laughs> um, was just Palladium books are like that. It, it doesn't matter that I've never, you know, I have only played a little bit of Palladium Fantasy. I haven't read most of the books, but I've, you know, heard from people for years how great they are, right? Oh, yeah. And um, and, and, it, and it's the same thing with everything. It's like, oh, oh, yeah, Nightbane, that's that's like a hidden gem. You know, Splicers, yeah, there's it's got a hardcore, you know, this hardcore, like, underground following. So that's the thing about Palladium is that uh, Kevin's never skimped on 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 the quality and uh, a lot of times he's he's done a lot of work and let other people take the glory with their name going first. 
when it says somebody in some beta, but he's, he's, he, he really knows how to elevate work and make sure that it, it comes in with what the fans are, are looking for and is really going to excite the player base. So that's one of the things that, that I was really excited to join Palladium Books um, because of that. Besides the fact that it's my favorite system, you know, and it's a part of my childhood, um, is that I, I know that we're just, we've, we've got a lot of great material um, that still enchants a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, one of your strengths is an incredibly loyal fan base and your dedication to as long as possible supporting even your more niche products. Uh, me and the other recon people are over here thanking you every single day. <laughs> when can we get another supplement? Uh <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, and it, the fact that it's a two-way street, that appreciation, you know, we appreciate your products, your product lines, the hidden gems, as you said, and you all have been so good over the decades at communicating that appreciation back and that sense of community didn't necessarily exist for a lot of games. And it's always been kind of a core part of Palladium that I just so glad that we see going forward. Yeah, I, I'll second that. Like, I remember growing up with Palladium being the game that I started with. Like, I might not actually be a role-playing gamer today if I hadn't encountered that sweet, sweet black and red original fantasy <laughs> cover. <laughs> but I do remember multiple different occasions throughout my middle school years, my teen years, and my 20s, encountering new groups of friends, conversations of RPGs would come up, and then somebody would mention Palladium, and then it's like like prairie dogs, just... <gasps> <laughs> somebody said P-word. <laughs> Let's talk. <laughs> it, was, it, it was so much more of a connection on that than it, anything that we experienced from like D&D or pretty much any other game. Yeah. 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 Well, it's funny you guys say that because it, it was one of the things that from within the industry, I got a lot of criticism for that. I was writing unique worlds and unique characters uh, as opposed to a lot of generic stuff mm -hmm. that there is too much of my own voice in my books. And I'm like, look, they're my books and I'm talking to the fans. And I, and I love that. I, I, like I said, I was a comic book guy and I loved Marvel comics for the same reasons. Exactly. Stan Lee didn't talk down to you. Stan Lee talked to you like he was a buddy. Um, you just felt like you were an important part. You know, they, they even had something called a no prize of you found a mistake and you sent it in. And it was pretty awesome. I actually got two as a kid. And my mom thought I was crazy because I'm all excited. I'm like dancing around the house. I'm like <laughs> 12 years old, right? And, and, or 13. And she's like, but it's just an empty envelope. But I'm like, yeah, but it's from Marvel. It's got the Marvel logo, and there's a, a picture of the Hulk on the front, and, and it, it says, no prize. <laughs> and it's exactly what it was. It's no prize. It just kind of acknowledged that you sent this in, and they thought it was kind of clever, or, or, or you know, and it just, I loved that. And, and I wanted to create that same feel with, with my company, because it meant so much to me as a kid. And, and even as an adult, and, and I wanted to put that across. And then Eric and I were both really into creating vivid worlds and characters. For me, role playing is all about character and, and storytelling. And so I try to put that in our games. And, I, and I've said it before, you know, when I'm writing these these books, I'm thinking of you guys. I mean, not you two specifically, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and you, especially you two guys, of course. <laughs> but, you know, it's, I'm writing, and again, I had people accuse me of, well, you're pandering to your audience. And I thought about it for a minute, and I'm like, yes, yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. I, I'm one of you. I, I know what I love in the games, and I want to give you that excitement. I'm writing something, and I'm, Sean's the same way. When we come up with something, we're like, Oh my God, the fans are going to love this. Yes. I mean, we say shit like that all the time because we're thinking about you and we're thinking about as role players ourselves, what would get us excited? What would make us go, Oh my God, this is fantastic. Or, Oh my gosh, I don't want to ever run into that horrible thing. 
um, which of course the game master is going to seize immediately and toss into the game. But <laughs> you know, it's yeah. I think again, it helps that you we love what we do. So yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, well, we love playing those games. So thank you for a lifetime of imagination. <laughs> oh yeah, like literally a lifetime for some of your fans. Mm -hmm. I I happen to have a young person whose first role playing game was at the age of eight with their father's group in Palladium Fantasy, <laughs> and by age of eleven was running a TMNT group with their friends. And so it is a lifetime and your commitment over your lifetime to continuing telling these stories in this medium means so much to so many people. And the fact that you're able to do things now, like reach back through time and grab TMNT and other strangeness and pull it. And not only I'll use your word, pander to your fans <laughs> with the nostalgia of the original. Please pander. But, but isn't that put terrible? It, put it out there for an entire new generation. Yeah. And yeah, it's, I'm glad you all are in a position and have the heart to do this. Oh, thank you. It is a, it's a big um, labor of love. And my inner child is doing backflips, as I say. Um, and right now it just, it's, it's, it really is full circle for someone like me who grew up on, as you said, full lifetime of Kevin's games. Uh, I didn't discover this until I was about 10, but <laughs> it's been, it's been really great. We're, we're just, yeah, we're, we're really excited about, uh, this and then, and then moving on to the future oh, with yeah. even more big releases. We've got lots of cool things planned that, uh, we can't talk about all of it, but, mm. uh, this is, uh. One of the big things. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So I was trying to come up with a fun final question, and I think I got one. So this one's for you, Kevin. Okay. What have been the most surprising answers you've heard for the bones given to Alstay the Bone Stealer in the Tombs of Gur City adventure? <laughs> oh, man. I know there's, there's, there's been a, just such an array of different things. <laughs> It's crazy what some people come up with. I'm always amazed at what gamers come up with that are either clever or silly or funny or I don't know if I could pick just any any one uh, off the top of my head. I know there's a lot of wolfins running around that have very limp tails nowadays <laughs> because they gave away <laughs> tail bones. I, I remember one quote from a friend of mine. We were in high school and... We, I was playing in the adventure at the time and the GM ran us through the whole thing. And my buddy's like, I'll just give him one of those useless bones in the foot. And <laughs> I'm like, what useless bones in the foot? But whatever. <laughs> well, thank you both for being on. This is an exciting moment in the hobby. It's an exciting moment for both of us personally. And Matthew, who couldn't be here today, uh, we are looking forward to this going live uh, and we're looking forward to potentially having y'all back on other topics related yeah. to your wonderful, wonderful product line. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. I know that like we're largely here talking about turtles, but as a Palladium Fantasy fan, first and foremost, this has been a fantastic year. <laughs> yes, yes, it has. <laughs> I've been so happy with all of the news and the things I've gotten in the mail with Kevin's signature on them. Uh, it's a good year to be a Palladium fan. Oh, hey, let me mention, while you, since you brought up autographs, our uh, Christmas surprise package offer has just started. Ooh. And, you know, one of, the, one of the cool things about that is you get books uh, on the cheap, and you never know exactly what you're getting, and we are happy to sign every single book if that's what you guys want. So, Excuse me while I quick log into the Palladium website right now and get my first order in. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have said this many times on this show that the Christmas grab bag is probably the best annual deal in gaming. Yeah, we, we make a point of talking about yeah. it every single year because it's such a good deal. We both have multiple art pieces that you all have sent, and it's... You know, some of them are like, we got them framed yeah. behind Nathaniel. And yeah. I yeah. got some that are uh, actually at the mat shop right now. I had to find uh, a 
person who is willing to work with the size because it was some of the offcut drafts that you sent. And the most of the mat shops I went to were like, yeah, we don't work with that non-standard size. And I'm like, well, fine, I'll find someone who does. <laughs> yeah, and we're uh and just keep your eyes open. We're we're uh still working on um Yinsloth Expeditions, which is the you know, Insloth Jungles got so expanded for second edition we had to do another book. Um oh my as God. well as we're working on uh, bestiary too. Yeah. So Ooh. um just keep your eyes peeled for that stuff too. The turtles does not mean the no. end of the world on that front. <laughs> Although it is keeping uh, it gets to be very, very busy. So. <laughs> what about the edge of the world? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, and um, again, we really appreciate y'all having us on. Yeah, yeah, very much. I'm glad this worked out. Yeah. Any final things you want to mention, plug, et cetera, et cetera? No, yeah, I think that does it. Yeah. Check out the Kickstarter. Yeah. Teenage please. Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness. Please share it with your friends and family and even people you don't know. <laughs> oh, actually, no. That is one important last question. Are you going to have any early birds, or is it just going to be straight up standard um, reward tiers? We're not going to have any strict early bird um, offering, um, but uh, although we are working with backer get promotions, and so the, if that is a way that you can get in on the early bird, if you um, see one of the ads and, and click on that. But uh, it, we're not, yeah, not the normal standard early bird. That, that's more of like a marketing campaign. Special. Gotcha. But anything that we offer there is going to be available to anyone at the end of the campaign as well. So well, not like you will miss out if you didn't, you know, click on one of their links or something. And of course, the follow-up question to that is, are there any of the rewards that are specifically limited in number? Um, there are a few that um, we're still counting up and going through things uh but we will have a limited number that include some physical um items i believe um and those of course there's just what there is um like with the titan robotics campaign we did um original pieces of art mm -hmm. um for for a certain tier of backers. no we don't have original <laughs> <tier of> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I think no Nathaniel why. needs a moment <laughs> <laughs> I, I, at one point i did have a bunch of kevin long pencil art but i had sold it years ago uh -huh. so you'd be amazed what kevin files away so <laughs> we will have some some cool stuff the one thing i will say is is get it on day one because that's when it's going to be oh yeah i mean lat with titan robotics and that was i think that's you know there's no way that the tar tmnt and other strangers isn't going to be much bigger than titan robotics um, which I'm happy I was proud of that campaign, but still, <laughs> this is going to be, this is going to dwarf that. And, uh, that stuff disappeared oh, almost yeah. instantaneously. Yep. So, uh, we, we will be doing what we can to provide, but I can't, we can't really say anything specific yet on numbers. I would just say, get in day one. And that's the other thing I will say to fans. is just, if you get in and you know that you want to get more, get in at some pledge level that you can afford because during the back kit period, you can upgrade your pledge. Mm -hmm. what's available so get your foot in the door with you know um, one of the lower levels if it's one of those things where hey you know you got to wait a paycheck or two to get the full monty of the other stuff that you want so just one that's one last little suggestion for people great recommendation and yeah i we have a discord uh server that's associated with uh the podcast and lots of people have been talking about the pod uh, about the upcoming kickstarter we have a whole bunch of folks who are going to be spending the day the Kickstarter goes live, hitting refresh, 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 <laughs> waiting for it to pop. Um, we're going to continue promoting it at this point. I think about the only way we can go larger in our promotion than we're doing now would be, oh, billboards. Um, <laughs> if Clear Channel, if you are running a discount anywhere in the uh, P Pacific Northwest, <laughs> let us know. We might be able to work something out. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, we appreciate it, guys. Yeah, we appreciate both of you taking the time to come on here. It was, it was this was a wonderful chat. Thank you very much. And folks, thanks again for listening to the Glitter Boys. I believe the Kickstarter is launching on October thirty first. Correct. Yep. Drop by our Discord server and talk about your love with the Ninja Turtles with us, and uh, we hope to see you there. Take Welcome. care. Cheers. Take care. Starships, magic, mystic martial arts, 
romance. All of these can be found in A Cloak of Blades by Isaac Sher. You might have heard my name before. I've done a lot of voiceover work for Breakfast Puppies, and I've recently released my first novel. It's available on Amazon as an ebook and paperback, and you can get it for free if you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription. I do hope you'll support my work as you're supporting Breakfast Puppies, and it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Have a good one. You've been listening to The Glitter Boys, a Palladium Books fan podcast. Glitter Boys, Rifts, the Megaverse, and all other such topics are the property of Kevin Sambita and Palladium Books. Please buy all their stuff and help keep them in print and making more games. You can order directly at palladiumbooks.com, and their entire catalog is available digitally at DriveThruRPG as well. Our opening music is 8-Bit Bass and Lead by Furby Guy from freesound.org. This closing music is Caravana by Philip Gross, available at freemusicarchive.org. All sound effects used are self-made or acquired via Creative Commons Zero License. If you like what you have heard, find us on Twitter and Facebook as The Glitter Boys. That's B-O-I-S. And check us out online at breakfastpuppies.com slash glitterboys. And also join us on the Breakfast Puppies Network Discord at breakfastpuppies.com slash discord. And if you want to help us out, please spread the word and help us build a community. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you next time. 